So far in our work, we've started looking at the Maclaurin expansion. We looked e to the x, the natural log of 1 plus x, sine x and cos x. In this particular question, we're asked to use the Maclaurin expansion and differentiation to expand in ascending powers of x up to and including the terms in x to the fourth, e to the 3x, the natural log of 1 plus 2x and sine squared x. I'm going to assume you've watched those other videos because um, there's quite a lot of work that we need to do in these and I'm going to go through them a couple of different ways based purely on this. We need to use differentiation. Generally, we would be allowed to use the general results. Now, what we'll do, we'll do it both ways. I'll start off with differentiation and then applying the Maclaurin expansion and then we will look at general results. So let's uh, recap the Maclaurin expansion. What we have is if we have the f of x is equal to the f of 0 plus f dashed of 0 multiplied by x plus f double dashed of 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial plus f triple dashed of 0 x cubed over 3 factorial on and on and on then we'll have the r derivative of 0 x to the power of r over r factorial and so on and this builds up our infinite series or the Maclaurin expansion. We looked at the validity um, for different particular functions of x and we'll bring that in um, as we go today. So let's start off here. Let's take the f of x is equal to e to the 3x. So I'm going to do differentiating it first and then we'll do the general result after. f dashed of x, we're going to end up now with 3e to the 3x. The second derivative, f double dash of x, we're going to end up with 9e to the 3x. Third derivative uh, is going to give us now 27e to the 3x. The fourth derivative is going to now give us 81e to the 3x. And in general, the nth derivative, f, um, the nth derivative of x will give us, now you can see it's going to give us 3 to the n e to the 3x. So, if you needed to expand more terms, let's just probably look at writing now. It's 3 to the n, so however many you've got, you can do that. So we've got all of these. Now what we need to do is evaluate the f of 0. The f of 0 is going to be e to the 0, which is 1. f dashed of 0 is going to be now 3 e to the 0, which of course is 3. f double dashed of 0 is going to be equal to 9 e to the 0, which is 9. We've now got the third derivative of 0, which is going to give us 27, e to the 0, which is 27. And then finally, the fourth derivative, which will give us 81, e to the 0, which is 81. So all we need to do is apply this and put this in here. So we can say now e to the 3x is going to be equal to, and you might want to say it's approximately equal to the first few terms, but if we say it's equal to, and then put a dot, 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 it'll keep going, what we can do is express the first three, ter three or four terms. So what have we got? Oh, in fact, in this one, we need to do five terms, don't we? So we've got e to the 0, which is 1. So f of 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. f dashed of 0 multiplied by x, so that's going to give me plus 3x. f double dash of 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial, gives me now 9x squared over 2 factorial, and I'll write it like so, then we're going to get plus 27x cubed over 3 factorial, and then 81 over, so 81x to the 4th over 4 factorial, and so on and so forth. So, this is where we wind up, and we can tidy that up. If we just think what we've got now, e to the 3x is going to be equal to 1 plus 3x, plus 9 over 2x squared. 27 over 3 factorial is 27, uh, 27 over 6, which we can divide both by 3, which will give us 9 over 2x cubed. 81 over 4 factorial is 81 over 24. Uh, what can we do with that? Take a 3 out of it, 27 over 8 x to the fourth and so on and so forth. So that is now the Maclaurin expansion for e to the 3x using differentiation. So that would be your answer. It's valid for all x's. My other, my, my general approach would be to take the, the general expansion and we'd have 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and then we would go right the way up and we'd have dot, 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 dot. And then we'd have x to the r over r factorial. So let's focus our attentions on the first 
uh, five terms in the series. So if we want e to the 3x, all we need to do is sub in. Instead of x, we're going to have 3x. And then instead of x squared, we're going to have 3x squared over 2 factorial. Then we're going to have plus now 3x cubed over 3 factorial. And then plus 3x to the 4th over 4 factorial. And you'll see using basic uh, powers here, we can see that's going to give us 1 plus 3x plus 9x squared over 2. And then we're going to get 27x cubed over 3 factorial, which gives us a 27 over 3, which was a 9 over 2. And then we're going to get 3x to the 4th, which is going to give me 81x to the 4th over 4 factorial, which gave us the 27 over 8x to the 4th, and so on. So this is using a general result and subbing in 3x instead of x. And you can see it gives us exactly the same thing. So that's using differentiation. If you're asked to do that, you need to do it. And it's more likely you'll be asked to show this with a Taylor series, certainly. But if you're not, and you're simply uh, expected to use standard results, just plug in, instead of x, plug in 3x and just tidy it all up. So there we go. Nice and straightforward. OK, let's do the next one. In fact, let's do this one backwards. Let's go the other way. Let's take the natural log of 1 plus x and expand that. We get x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4 and dot 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 and I also have to remember minus 1 r to the minus 1 x to the r over r. Do check that's right. I was, um, I was try and half remember it we never really use it it's quoted on a formula sheet but essentially we wouldn't really use it and we realized that x was valid from negative to positive one um, so we could take values of x from negative to positive one so let's instead of x put 2x so let's do the natural log of 1 plus 2x that's going to give us now 2x and then we're going to have minus 2x squared over 2 then we're going to have plus 2x cubed over 3, then minus 2x, 4th to the 4th over 4, and so on and so forth. So just expanding this out, we'll have a natural log of 1 plus 2x, and we could say it's approximately equal to the first few terms, which is going to give us 2x. That's going to give me 4x squared over 2, which is going to be minus uh, 2x squared. This is going to give me now plus 8x cubed over 3, so 8 over 3x cubed. And then what's this one going to give me? That's going to give me 16x to the 4th over 4, which should be, what's that? 16 over 4 is 4x to the 4th. So we can say an approximate for that, using the first four terms, would be given as the natural log of 1 plus 2x is 2x, minus 2x squared, plus 8 over 3x cubed, minus 4x to the 4th. Let's now use their method. So what they want us to say now is using differentiation, f of x is equal to the natural log of 1 plus 2x. For derivative f dash of x, we're going to end up with 1 over the inside function multiplied through by the derivative inside function. So I can write this now as 1 plus 2x to the minus 1 multiplied by 2. I'm assuming that you can differentiate a log function. It's kind of um, expected at this level. So we'll now take the second derivative and we'll end up now with minus 4 1 plus 2x to the minus 2. The third derivative, we will end up now with plus 16, and then we'll have 2x to the minus 3. And then finally, the fourth derivative, we're going to end up with, what's that going to give me? Minus 96, 1 plus 2x to the minus 4. So you differentiate in the way that you're happy. All I've done is repeated applications of the chain rule here, um, but I will let you differentiate that uh, in whichever way you want. So let's do the f of 0. What we're going to get is the natural log of 1 plus 0, which of course is 0. The uh, first derivative, we're going to end up with 2 lots of 1 to the minus 1, which just gives us 2. The second derivative, we're going to end up with minus 4 lots of 1 to the minus 2, which of course gives us minus 4. Third derivative, we're going to end up now with 16 lots of 1 to the minus 3, which is 16. And then the fourth derivative, we're going to end up with minus 96 lots of 1 to the minus 4, which of course is minus 96. 
So there we go. And apologies, I'm kind of going a little fast on these. It's just, you can see it's quite taxing and uh, we could do things easier. So what we can say then, the f of x using McLaurin, f of uh, 0 plus f dashed of 0 multiplied by x plus f double dash of 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial. And I will go up to the term x to 4 and then we'll just feed these in. Uh, triple dash of x cubed over 3 factorial and then we'll uh, have the fourth derivative of 0 multiplied by x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on and so forth. So let's pick this up then. So the f of 0 is going to give me 0. So what I can now write then is the natural log of 1 plus 2x will be equal to 0. Then we want f dashed of 0 multiplied by x. So that's going to give me plus 2x. Then we want f double dash of 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial. Well, that's minus 4x squared over 2 factorial. Then we want f triple dash of x multiplied by x cubed over 3 factorial. So that's going to give me uh, 16x cubed over 3 factorial. And then finally, we're going to have now the fourth multiplied by x to the fourth. So we're going to have minus 96x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on and so forth. We can see this is going to tidy up to give us exactly what we want. So we can say now that the natural log of 1 plus 2x will be equal to 2x minus 2x squared plus 8 over 3x cubed. And then that's going to leave us, uh, what's that going to leave us now? 96 over 24, which is minus 4x to the fourth, dot, dot, dot. We knew that the original was valid from negative 1 to positive 1, inclusive of positive 1. What we now have is from negative 1 half to positive 1 half, inclusive of positive 1 half. Just consider what we've got here is now we've taken x to be 2x, so we would feed in and simply divide through uh, at inequality by the 2. So there we go, that looks pretty much like what we've, we've got up here. So this right here, is going to be valid instead of uh, from negative one to one it's going to be from negative half to a half there we go okay let's go on to the next one sine squared x now sine squared x is simply sine x all squared if we consider the mclaurin expansion of sine x we get x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial and so on and so forth we're interested in terms um, up to x to the fourth. So essentially what I can say is sine squared x is going to be now equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial all squared. As we're not going to be needing that term uh, in x to the fifth. So just expanding this out, what we're going to have, if we think about it now, just using double brackets, nice and straightforward, we're going to have x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. x times by x gives me x squared. x multiplied by negative x cubed over 3 factorial. What's that going to give me? Minus x to the fourth over 3 factorial. We're going to have another one of those. So we'll have minus x to the fourth over 3 factorial again. Um, and what have we got? 3 factorial is 6. So we end up now on this one with x squared minus x to the fourth over 6 minus x to the fourth over 6, which we can, of course, tidy up now to x squared minus x to the fourth over 3. So we can say sine squared x will be equal to dot, dot, dot afterwards. Or you can say that the approximation is going to be x squared minus x to the fourth over 3. In fact, let's, let's bend some rules. Let's use a trig identity. Let's say that cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x and see if it still holds. That means sine squared x is going to be, what's that going to give me? 1 half, 1 minus cos 2x. Let's see if we can just break the thing by using this. So what I'm saying now is if I expand cos 2x and subtract that away from 1 and multiply it by half, I'm going to end up with this. So let's look now at cos x. Let's look at the expansion of cos x. The expansion of cos x gives me uh, 1 minus x squared over 2, and then we're going to have x to the 4th over 4. Uh, factorial, aren't they? They're factorials. So let's now do cos 2x. So cos 2x will be now 1 minus, and we'll have 2 
x squared over 2 factorial, which is 2. And then we'll have plus 2x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Okay, and let's see what that's going to give us. That's going to give us 1 minus, and that will give us minus 2x squared, won't it? Uh, minus 2x squared. And then on this one, we're going to have, on this one, 16x uh, to the fourth over 24. Uh, so we've got 16 over 24, which we could write as 2 over 3. So plus uh, 2x to the fourth over 3. So that's what, um, they're the first few terms now of cos 2x. So what we can do at this point now is feed it into here and, and see if we can break it. So what we can say then is sine squared x is going to be equal to 1 half, 1 minus now what we've got. Remember, we're putting in cos 2x, so we're just subtracting this. 1 minus 2x squared plus 2 over 3x to the fourth. So sine squared x will be equal to 1 half. Now 1 minus 1 will disappear. Minus minus 2x squared gives me 2x squared, minus 2 over 3x to the fourth. And you can see from this that those 2s are going to cancel, okay, with the half. So we can say sine uh, squared x is approximately equal to, using the first two terms, we're going to have x squared minus x to the fourth over 3. And if we look at that, what we can see back up here is exactly the same. We weren't asked to do that, we were asked to differentiate it. So let's let's actually do what we're meant to do. Um, and we'll we'll take it as the f of x is equal to sine, and I'm going to write this as sine x all squared. So f dashed of x, we're going to end up now with 2 sine x cos x, or I would prefer to write this as sine 2x. Second derivative, f double dashed of x is going to be equal now to 2 cos 2x. Third derivative is going to be now minus 4 sine 2x. And the fourth derivative is going to be equal. What's that going to give me? Minus 8 uh, cos 2x. So let's do f of 0. That's going to be 0. f dashed of 0, still 0. All I'm doing is plugging these in. You might want to show this, but I'm, as you can see, we're getting quite away into this in terms of time. Um, 2 lots of cos of 2 naught is going to give me 2. Then we're going to get the third derivative. Uh, we're going to get naught. And then we're going to sub in 0. I'm assuming that you understand cos of 0 is 1. So we take the fourth derivative and that's going to give us minus 8. So there we go. Let's now apply Maclaurin's expansion. We know the Maclaurin expansion. f of x is going to be equal to the f of 0 plus f dashed of 0 multiplied by x plus f, and we'll go up to the fourth one, uh, x squared over 2 factorial. Then we're going to have plus, uh, what's this, the third derivative of x multiplied by x cubed over 3 factorial plus the fourth derivative of 0, x to the fourth over 4 factorial. So let's work with this then. We can see now that um, sine, we can say sine squared x will be equal to the f of 0, which is 0 plus f dashed to 0 multiplied by x, which is 0, and then we get plus. Now we're going to get 2x squared, so f double dash to 0 is 2, 2x squared over 2 factorial. Then we're going to get the next one, plus 0, and then we're going to get minus 8x to the 4th over 4 factorial, okay? And we'll put that like so. And, of course, if this is equal, it's going to go on and dot, 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 dot. So we've got 8 over 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24. So dividing both by 8, that will give us 1 over 3. So sine squared x, and you might want to write an approximate here, of x squared, and then we're going to have minus x to the 4th over 3. All I've done is simplify that and simplify that. So there we go. And just, I mean, that's valid for all, all um, x's. We've rushed through those, but hopefully that gives you some idea. If you've watched the other videos, it should kind of make sense. Just a, a side bit. If x is very small, then sine x is approximately equal to x. And if, again, if x is small, cos x is approximately equal to 1 minus x squared over 2. There are some things that you might be interested in looking into. Um, but in general, hopefully that's proved to be of some use. Certainly having to differentiate becomes a bit of a nightmare rather than using standard results.